Hello, Anishé, and today I would like to um, make a witchy book review. I have a couple of those witchy book reviews waiting, okay, that I want to do for a while. And uh, the first review that I'm going to do is going to be about this series, The Supermarket Sorceress. And this uh, series has three books in it. The Supermarket Sorcerer's 75 Simple Spells, Charms, Enchantments that can make, uh, you can make from supermarket ingredient. Okay. And as you see, those are small books. They look almost unimpressive. They are very thin and small, but I will talk about this in a second. Uh, the Supermarket Sorcerer's Sexy Hexes, which is the second book in the series. And The Supermarket Sorcerer's uh, Enchanted Evenings by uh, Lexa Rosanne here. And I have a feeling that Lexa Rosanne is not getting the love that she should get. And let's talk about her for a second. Lexa Rosanne is a wicked high priestess who organizes her own coven in New York City, which is a challenge, you know, having anything in New York City. New York City. A counselor and psychic, she works uh, at Enchantments, a white magic store in Manhattan. I don't know if this is longer true, because those books, uh, uh, those books are dated. Those books got published in 1996. It has been like well over 20 years since then. And, um, but she might still work there. She works at Enchant uh, Enchantments, a white magic store in Manhattan. She has made numerous television appearances. Yeah, I also made numerous television appearances. It doesn't make you a good soul sorcerer, it just makes you, you know, be a good face. Anyway, but I think that what I like about Lexa Rosan is that even though she, she brought these books to a Wiccan and Wiccan-based audience, those books have a lot of things from Hoodoo. Now, she doesn't take the condition formulas, she doesn't take the Bibles, she doesn't take the Psalms, she doesn't take the spirits, but she knows her ingredients. She really knows her ingredients. She really knows, for instance, to tell you that, you know, uh, if you want to protect your kitchen, you need to make a rope of garlic, onions, or peppers, and using ba baking soda and bay leaves and brooms. And no, it's a mixture of Wicca and Hoodoo. And I think this mixture is being rediscovered now, and I think, you know, a lot of Wiccans and a lot of uh, reclaiming witches and a lot of people are looking into Hoodoo to supplement what was missing from... Th those non-traditional religions because you know we kind of reclaiming our new religions and hoodoo is there for a while and even though it's a synchristic religion that has native american magic african magic jewish magic christian magic you know it takes from all over the place its resourcefulness made such a magical corpus that it will not be ignored a lot of wiccan people are burning fire roll protection incense you know, a lot of Wiccan people are using full fifth vinegar to banish, you know, from hoodoo recipes. Anna Riva still sells a lot, even though most of her stuff is basically colored oil and nothing else. So, you know, uh, and, and I think, you know, those books need to be rediscovered. Now, I didn't get them new, first of all, because I don't have the budget necessarily to get something new. Second, I got them, like, on um, thrift books. Where well, you can get a lot of uh, uh, cheap second-hand books, and you know this book came. Some of the, some women smoked on this book, like to death. Now those looks like tiny books. Like you know, probably you think, okay, it would have like you know a spell, but look, it's filled with text. It's filled with text. It, it's not something that you can read through a day. It takes you several days to read one of those books. It's like filled with text, philosophy, practical wisdom. And let me read to you what it has with spell-wise. Ju just, and I'm reading to you just the Supermarket Sorceress. The other ones are recommended, but I think this is like the first one was the best. And obviously, you know, if it has two, um, two sequels, apparently it was good enough. First section is health and beauty. 
and she has weight loss spells which contains potato spell and hot stuff spells spell to look magnificent spell for, for longevity spell to cure insomnia spell to keep to quit smoking and break a bad habit spell to relieve stress spell to ward off the, the winter cold or flu second part obstacles and enemies the obstacle removal spell exterminated eggs uh, spells which is by the way something that was taken from Bukharia and you can see like in folklore all over the world but using like eggs to remove obstacles like you know it's a very common thing but you know I didn't see so many spell books using those nowadays so I think this is a good thing unless you're vegan and then you know you find other ways to do it but if you're not vegan you have no excuses use some eggs Spell to banish negativity, spell to remove astral cords from ex-lovers, which is like, you know, this is such an important thing. Uh, the eggplant treasure hunt spell, spring treat spell, spell to remove unwanted guests, spell to get someone out of your life, cleanse buff spell, spell to ward off the boogeyman, spell to exercise the demons, spells to confuse an enemy or a competitor, the freeze your enemy spell, yeah, they put them in the freezer spell, which is like, you know, today is like, you know, the height of fashion. The You Dirty Rat spell, spell to let go of unpleasant feelings. Section 3, love, sex, relationship, and marriage. A love spell for Valentine, yam love spell, marriage spell, spells for domestic bliss, Cleopatra salad spell, and which is very funny because there is a Cleopatra condition recipe that you use for oils, incense, etc. And you know, the fact that she has a Cleopatra salad can complement this beautifully. Upper love spell, spell to end a relation and for ending of a relationship, spell to prevent sexual harassment. Section 4, Fidelity and Infidelity. Guess who is staying home for dinner spells, the happy home breaker spells, the happy bro home breaker spells too, spells to ward off a happy home breaker, spells to be forgiven for committed adultery, spell for keeping a woman faithful, space to, spells to keep a man faithful, which is a very hoodoo thing. I don't think I saw so many of those things in Wicca. So, you know, for, for the hoodoo-minded people, those should be like for you, like, you know, the blinking signs that this is what it is. The test infidelity, uh, the, the infidelity test spell. Section five, protection and home blessing. Spells for sigilist protection. Spell to ward off the evil eye. Sabrina's spell for protection while flying. You know, I didn't see so many spells while, you know, for protection while flying. Apartment hunt spells. Home blessing rituals. Spells to ward off na noisy neighbors. The American way spell. Native American house blessings and creating sacred space. You see, she does take stuff from Native Americanism, which is another sign of hoodoo. Kitchen witch magic. Home security spell. Car security spell. Squat spell. Okay, section six, dating and entertainment. Hot date spell, bewitching bath spell, spell to influence people at parties, telephone spells to stop someone from calling or to get someone to call. And I know people ask for this a lot. Spells to relocate missing, uh, to, to reconcile friends, the date from hell spell, quick fix spells. Okay, section seven, prosperity and success. Loafers and fishes prosperity spell. Spell for success. Shango macho money spell here. This was taken from uh, Voodoo and Santeria. Money drawing spells. S spells to save money. Spell to eliminate poverty. And I talked about this as a genre spell that doesn't get enough love. Spell for inspiration and creativity. Success in school spell. Children. How to conceive children. Spell to conceive children, you know, that's section eight. Uh, spells to ensure the healthy birth. Spells to keep children happy. Spell to inspire children to be creative. Spell for too much television or too much internet, you need to change that today. Spell to influence parents in your favor. Spell to protect children from harm. Spell to invoke the inner child. Spells for pets which is under the section of spells for children, which, you know, all your pot owners will totally get this. Luck and legalities. Legba, again, something that is taken from uh, Voodoo, which is another sign of the syncretism that Hudu gives you. Luck and uncrossing spell. You know what? I will read this one after I finish reading the, um, the uh, contents. 
spells to win at court. Lucky Sunday spell, luck spells. Section 10, work. And there is a section 11 of spirituality. A Java magic spell, Java like the coffee, which is being used in boss fix spells and stuff like that. Chore spell, spell for employment, spell to get a raise, spell for concentration, spells for laziness, spell for, spell for workaholics. Section 11, spirituality. Spell for mourners, spell for psychics, spell for prophetic dreams, spell to see the future or the past, spell for thanksgiving and the gratitude, and she has a bibliography. Okay, so those are the things. Now, please understand what I'm saying. In those, those are not just like, you know, okay, we have seen spells like this, you know, Judica Illis has those in her book or other people publish them. You know, she has spells that are easy and somewhat funny and they had the proper ingredients. Meaning you can like take the ingredient, discard her spell and do something else completely from those ingredients. And she basically has an article, what we would consider a blog article for each and every one of those spells. Now, let's see the Legba spell. You know, and I can tell you what I think about this because, you know, I'm a devout Legba worshipper. Leg Balak for an crossing spell. Coconut, imitation rum, and cinnamon. Three things that Papa Legba would love. Legba is the lord of obstacles similar to the Indian god Genash and the Greek god Hermes. This Yoruban god helps to clear the way and remove obstacles from the path to success. Leave offerings for him on the floor in your front door. Open the coconut and fill it with a shot of rum, real or imitation. No imitation, my dear. Just the real thing. But if you can't have that, put high proctose, corn syrup, or anything that is sweet, or alcoholic, or tobacco-y, or dangerous. Yet delicious that we love, because this is... He doesn't... He's not known for his uh, consuming of healthy products. Don't use imitation. Sprinkle cinnamon on top. Ask Legba to remove all obstacles in the path for success. Drink a shot of warm coconut milk mi flavored with cinnamon and rum to remove bad luck. You can add three shots of this mixture to your bath water. Legba is also petitioned to help release it to help release you from prison. So basically, you have an offering, a potion, and a bath in like this single spell that I haven't read in this, in, in, in this file. So you can say, okay, I want to make this spell. But I don't know. I don't want to do what she says. I want to make a lamp. So you can like, you know, take the coconut, break it open, mix it with rum, put some cinnamon in it, some coffee, some other legba ingredients and do a flambe and burn it for Papa Legba. But don't be surprised that stuff you love gets burned in process because Papa Legba has a wicked sense of humor. You could take this and make it your own with what's available to you, with what you can do. Okay? And... It's very difficult to find books like these that that have those things. Now, if you ask me why those books are so good, it's not because Lexa Roseanne is is so good. Okay, she is very good, but it's not just that she is very good. Uh, very good. I think that you know when you encounter a book that says the witch's book of spells. Okay, one needs to ask themselves from which tradition are those spells coming from, from which times. Are those spells are feasible for usage today? Are those spells for me? Do I feel that I'm connected to those spells? Do those spells using authentic ingredients? Meaning, you know, you need to have in your library when assessing a book of spells enough uh, reference books that you can check the crystals in the spell and see if they are matching the spell. If there are herbs and the herbs do what the authors say that they do you are basically creating this web of practical um, con um, correspondences that are right for you and are available for you and some of those correspondences are going to be seasonal okay for instance you know when uh, the, it's a time for uh, you know for when roses bloom and in israel is not such a long season, I pick them up. The rest of the year, I have to contend with dried roses from this rose season, or bought roses, or I just open a, a bottle of rose oil, or rose attar, depending on what I need, 
for love spells or other sort of spells that require rows. And yes, those are more than just love spells. And the availability changed the nature of the spell according to the season, okay? So you need to be in touch with the seasonality of how things change. So if you can get those books, okay, I highly recommend them. Again, they are small, they are portable, but they are also rich in information. I love them. Lexa Rosanne is a great author. I wish to see more from her. And I also think that one of the other thing that makes those books good is the fact that, you know, she willingly limited herself. She willingly said, I just want spells from stuff that you can buy from the supermarket. So basically she challenged herself to connect herself to, um, to basically, you know, what's available in most supermarkets uh, around uh, America which is also a lot of things that are available in Israel. And I think those sorts of limitations are the ones that uh, makes you think about which ingredients are available and what do I replace this wild herb that I used to use and that I can get in the supermarket. And this gives a lot of inspiration. Now, it's not that I'm against spells done with uh, natural ingredients. I'm a big wild harvester myself, okay? And I go to force around to harvest some of the ingredients for me. But I think that this is a great mental exercise that created a great result. Get the book, read, get those books if you are into spellcrafting. Read them, keep them as reference. They are marvelous. Goodbye and a share.